two years after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, a statement that shocked NATO allies from former president and likely Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump. And one of the presidents of a big country stood up and said, well, sir, uh, if we don't pay and we're attacked by Russia, will you protect us? I said, you didn't pay? You're delinquent? He said, yes, let's say that happened. No, I would not protect you. In fact, I would encourage them to do whatever the hell they want. Can you imagine a former president of the United States saying that? President Joe Biden, who has made strengthening coalitions against adversaries the central tenet of his foreign policy, slammed his predecessor's transactional approach. No other president in our history has ever bowed down to a Russian dictator. Well, let me say this as clearly as I can. I never will. For God's sake, it's dumb, it's shameful, it's dangerous, it's un-American. Biden says he upholds the sacred commitment under NATO's Article 5 that requires members to assist one another in the event of an outside attack. It's a direct clash with Trump, who is again pushing for his brand of America first isolationism. Trump's calls have caused anxiety among allies. This year, I expect 18 allies to spend 2% of the GDP on defense. That is another record number and a six-fold increase from 2014, when only three allies met the target. Trump campaign senior advisor Jason Miller told VOA in a statement that Trump got our allies to increase their NATO spending by demanding they pay up. Another Trump ally, retired Army Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg, suggested a tiered alliance in which members that failed to meet the 2% target on defense would not be covered by Article 5 protections. Others say the signals from Trump and his allies have gone beyond isolationism and contradict the essence of deterrence. Trump is trying to win points through bravado. And American bravado on the international stage has been incredibly powerful for America's friends. But this is kind of the inverse, uh, kind of a bravado. This is a, well, maybe we won't show up at all. Foreign policy is not traditionally a key issue in U.S. elections. With Trump's NATO bashing, however, the broader issue of America's role in the world is set to become another divide among voters. It's highly politicized. It's being used uh, by Trump uh, to gin up his base. Uh, but there is an underlying understanding among Americans that the alliance itself is important. Just 50 percent of Republicans believe the U.S. benefits from transatlantic alliances compared with 80 percent of Democrats and 63 percent of independents, according to an October poll by the Chicago Council on Global Affairs. Patsy Widakuswara, Viewing News at the White House.